Morning folks, Brian here, Geomagnetic Earthwatch, Monday, January 19, 2026. Ongoing reporting on the current space weather conditions and one thing that we need to focus on, uh, I don't think enough people are really bringing this to your attention. Uh, our current uh, Gauche proton flux or solar radiation storm level is almost at S4 severe levels. And this is going to be the topic of my discussion in this video. So we're very close. We're very close. So when we have, uh, there's different types and levels of events, eruptive events from our sun. We have the solar flare and the flare itself is the bright light that we actually see in all the videos. That is the flare. Uh, emitting the hard x-rays, which takes only about 8.3 minutes to reach the Earth, traveling at the speed of light. Sometimes the flares will uh, produce a uh, CME, coronal mass ejection, and that can take, uh, let's say, 18 to 72 hours to reach us. In the large extreme event, I would say 12 hours. Sometimes we can have a filament eruption. A strand of plasma will whip out from the sun and throw out a CME. Before, we can have a coronal hole opening, an opening in the corona of the sun, releasing the faster solar winds, which contains the highly charged particles and magnetic field, such I've already described. There's another event. It's called the solar radiation storms. Sometimes, within minutes of a large enough solar flare, protons are ejected from the sun. Although not quite traveling the speed of light, they can reach us in tens of minutes. So currently, we're almost at S4 severe levels, radiation storms. And here's a table going through the different levels. So this is uh, similar to the level of uh, geomagnetic storms. One moment. So it starts off at the bottom, uh, S1 minor, S2 moderate, S3 strong, S4 severe, and S5 extreme. So basically the same category as geomagnetic storms. This is different. This is a solar radiation storm. So currently we're very close to uh, S4 severe. And the effects could be uh, biological, unavoidable radiation hazards to astronauts on extra, extra vehicular activities. Passengers and crew at high-flying aircraft at high altitudes may be exposed to a radiation risk. Satellite operations can be affected, affecting their memory devices, as well as other systems, high-frequency radio communications, etc. Most of the time we've only reached S3 levels. And as I said, we're very close to S4. We need to continue to monitor it to see if it's gonna reach S5. So we're very close to S4. It's a one day measurement, six hours. Now, one thing about these solar radiation storm, they can last for days. Now, this uh, radiation level can be 10 times more than the muons, the muons, which are the secondary showering particles from cosmic rays. And these do reach, uh, they can reach the Earth's surface. And when they do, it's called a ground level enhancement or ground level event, GLE, which can induce currents along conductors like pipelines power lines, rail lines. So the corolla mass ejection has not reached us yet. Maybe in a few hours, but not yet. But the solar radiation storm has been ongoing for quite a few hours since yesterday. And we've already breached just four. Uh, so let's show you, show you one more. Now the event, the event is gonna be showing up in just a second. Here's our flare CME. And all these particles here, all these specks, those are actually the protons hitting the sensors of the satellite.
So all this snowy like picture, these are the actual protons hitting the uh, satellite. These uh, solar radiation storms can also cause auroras. Are you beginning to understand? Well, some people get confused. They don't know why auroras are showing up before the arrival of CMEs. It's the solar radiation storms. So now during these events, um, some data from satellites can give false information values. Solar wind readings may be false. So right now it's indicating very, very slow solar wind readings. That could be a malfunction of the satellites giving false information. So when a solar radi radiation storm reaches S2 levels, false readings may occur and continue to uh, be in error after the event. And a ground, uh, ground level enhancement, GLE, is a uh, secondary event. What are some of the other indications we're being hit by solar radiation storm? A um, couple or three years ago, my daughter woke up one morning and uh, she says, Dada, I have this ringing in my ear. I never had it before. Later on that day, a neighbor down the uh, lane from me says, Brian, I woke up this morning, I have this ringing in my ear. I've never had that before. Now, of course, when you're staying on top of things, the space weather and everything else, you, you know what the cause is. Here's another indication I'll show you. This is a video clip from an older video. So these are hydro lines in front of my house. And this happens during uh, geomagnetic storms, specifically solar radiation storms. Let's take a look first, then we'll explain. Evening, folks. Brian here. Friday, November 22, 2024. So this is a hydro line uh, right in front of my house. And what you're looking at is a uh, plasma discharge, electric discharge, caused by uh, ionization of the air around the power lines. Now, this happens uh, during uh, solar storms, such as the one that... Uh, apparently has just finished uh, however i do have a theory explanation here i'm going to wait to the end of this video before i get into it so these are the horizontal crossbars that the corona or the plasma is uh, being transmitted along between the uh, capacitors So while I'm doing the clips for this video, I keep on checking back and we're now at a threshold at S4 severe solar radiation storm levels. Still climbing. Uh, one moment, please. So 1750 UTC. 1000 UTC. Zero four twenty two six hours approximately six hours maybe eight hours. So we're going to check back later. Later this evening, and that'll be the same time as the arrival of the CME. So I may be at the beginning levels of uh, one of the ca categories of dementia, serious memory loss. So I do have to start doing written notes for these videos. A lot of it's just up here. I just got to find it, right? Sort through it. This wacko brain here. Mm -hmm. Short-term memory loss. Just sorry, folks. Hang on. 
So I showed you two examples of uh, solar radiation possibly reaching my area, southern British Columbia, in the past. So normally during these events, the solar radiation storms are restricted to the polar regions, which is why they have to restrict air traffic over the north and south, uh, mostly the north polar regions. So that polar region could extend right down to the bottom end of Alaska, the bottom end of the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and so on, or even lower. Unless, folks, as I'm trying to teach you, if Earth is slowly developing a multipolar field with meandering weak zones on our planet, we don't know where they're going to pop up and for how long. The radiation, the protons will follow the magnetic field lines back down into the magnetic cusp. The cusp is shaped like this, so the particles will flow down the, the cusp into the north polar region and the south polar region, normally. But what if we're starting to develop a multipolar field? We're going to have a multitude of magnetic cusps, allowing that those highly energetic particles to flow down into different regions around the planet. Like my region, that was a couple of years ago or so. So that would also affect safe air travel globally, eventually. Um, uh, so again, during these events, the information gathered from the satellites and transmitted down to Earth can be corrupted. Right, Mark? I always know when you're going to be coming on. The information can be corrupted, corrupted, unreliable, not correct, whether it's from solar wind and uh, parameters, information, and so on. It can also affect GPS, GNS, GNSS systems, which is critical for aircraft navigation, aircraft avionics. Remember those aircraft that crashed in... Uh, Two in Indonesia, one in the Caribbean, suspect cause solar radiation particles, corrupted the systems, gave false readings. Another example, uh, for example, uh, the farmer fields, uh, when operating the tractors, they are operated by GPS because the planting, the, the planting the rows can go on for miles. Do you think a, a tractor operator can keep it straight going for miles? No, it operates off of GPS signals. This is why you have straight lines of your seeds being planted. They need GPS, correct GPS signals, and so on. I can go through and give you lots of other examples. But the point of this video is a lot of people focus on the, the solar flares, the big bright light and the CME, the plasma cloud blasting away and the solar winds reaching us and so forth. There's not enough focus and attention and education on the uh, sort of solar particle event, the solar radiation storm, such as right now, S4. Okay. And during these solar particle events, solar radiation storms, these can last for days. Okay, for days. The CME, when it hits us, about that much time. The coronal hole stream, that much time. The solar particle events, that much time okay so there is so much to learn to absorb to know to understand so we can better pre okay folks um th these videos i have to do it in segments and when i put it all together <clears throat> my computer most of the time i get everything in the correct order sometimes i don't tough Okay, uh, lots of new people here. I'm just a grumpy old dusty bag of bones, independent researcher. I'm not here to sell you or make you buy emails, books, coffee mugs, hoodies, sandals, teas, seeds, gold, silver, campsites. Uh, 
that ain't me. Everybody knows that. I don't project fear or anything like that for maximum likes. Uh, this is the primary source of income for me. So I would appreciate it uh, if you'd like to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell notification button. There's an option to become a member. I get into off topic and more controversial topics. I don't always have time to get there, but it's a means in which people can support me. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be around for the next few days. I have a daughter with autism ASD. And sometimes she develops a condition, a syndrome called pandas. Pediatric, acute neuropsychiatric, whatever, research it. Basically, when a child, even into the teenage years, gets a harsh throat infection. Sometimes the uh, autoimmune system misdirects the antibodies not to the site of the infection, but the part of the brain responsible for, among other things, behavioral regulation. And this results in uh, when they're triggered into uh, psychosis, psychotic behavior, extreme violence, rage, destructive behavior, suicidal thoughts, hallucinations, schizophrenia. which can also be amplified by geomagnetic storms that's going to be hitting us real soon. Prayers will be appreciated as well. So just in case I'm not around for several days. Anyway, I hope I put all, the, all this together in the proper order. We talk a lot about um, geomagnetic storms, solar storms, CMEs, Corona hole openings. But a lot of people miss this, uh, the solar radiation storms, which can be more powerful. As powerful as a Miyake event. Anyway, folks, you have some homework to do. Let's get to it.